So this was a Malay recipe and the person who posted it said it was like considered in her opinion, the best ayam masak mira recipe ever. Okay, so what do we need? Um, I posted the ingredients list in the event. If you, for whatever reason, <laughs> can't find the event, um, look. Let me just give a shout out to my new Facebook group. This is a free Facebook group. It's called Jack M Street Food Kitchen. And the link is down there, bit.ly. It's a bit.ly link, so it's shortened. bit.ly slash msfa hyphen group. Okay, msfa in capital hyphen group in lowercase. Okay, it is case sensitive. So if you type in wrong, then it won't work. All right, if you go to that group and send join request, this is where you will find all my live broadcasts moving forward. Like that's it, just to help people be able to find all these um, all, all these live videos of mine easily. And also there'll be other content as well. Um, but also the, uh, yeah, the ingredients list, like I said, is in the event, uh, the link for which is also in the MF. As a group, okay, and like I said, it just kind of helps match things a little bit better. But insofar as ingredients that you want, you want, uh, I mentioned originally, I wanted like bottled chili sauce, okay. So if you're Malaysian, if you grew up in Malaysia, you'll be familiar with a number of different types of bottled chili sauces, and they're sweet, they're not like Thai chili sauce sweet, but they're generally um, sweetish and they have. A lot of the time they have tomato in it, right? So it's almost like a, a chili, like ketchup, if you know what I mean, but better, okay? It will have garlic, it, it might have onion or whatever, but it will be very nice, it will be spicy, but it will have uh, a sweetness, and also it has like a tomato vibe. So if you've got that, then good. I don't actually have that for whatever reason. Apparently I must have used it a lot and forgot to replenish it. Um, so I'm going to actually use ketchup, okay? So I've got this giant bottle of ketchup. You're gonna find with my cooking that a lot of the time, um, how would you say it? A lot of the stuff that I use are not in pretty little um, mini sachets, okay? Because I come from a food production background. I used to own a restaurant. Everything I buy, I tend to buy in big bulk <laughs> quantities, even if I no longer have my restaurant, right? Okay, so you want ketchup, okay? I hope everyone's got ketchup. You want some garlic, okay? So I've got some garlic cloves here, peeled. You want some chicken? I'm using chicken legs here today. But look, when I made it for my student, we were just using chicken breast fillets, right? So whatever chicken you've got, <clears throat> that's totally fine. Like I said, we're trying to keep everything simple so that it's not too much of a stretch for you to be able to attempt this recipe and come out at the end with some level of success, okay? Um, I've got a bit of ginger here. This is too big a chunk. I'll probably just use half of it. If you've got ginger, throw it in. If you don't, leave it out. If you've got ginger powder, just add like, you know, depending on how much you're cooking, add like maybe uh, a teaspoon of ginger powder or something like that in it, okay? But again, if you don't have it, don't stress it either. Uh, brown onions, we've got brown onions here. And what we're going to do, we're going to uh, blend some of this brown onion and then we're going to slice the rest of it, okay? And also, we've got tomatoes, right? I think we've got some tomatoes. Canned tomatoes, that'd be fine too. If you don't have it, again, maybe add a little bit more tomato sauce in the whole thing, okay? And I've got some chili paste. Chili paste is, uh, if you've seen one of my previous broadcasts, I'm pretty sure I did it in my first broadcast, I can't remember now. But this is just basically chili, uh, dried chilies, right? That are being like boiled and then blend to a paste. That's all it is, okay? If you don't have it, um, then uh, I I'm only using this because, again, I don't have that bottle Malaysian chili sauce on hand, okay? So essentially, this plus this will give you some semblance of that Malaysian bottled chili sauce. Um, if you don't have this, if you only got ketchup, you've got chili flakes, that will work as well, okay? Um, then we've got, I've got to grab some turmeric, just hang on a sec. Okay, again, if you don't have it, don't worry. Don't, don't make it too hard on yourselves, okay? So I've got some turmeric powder over here, and you want a little salt, I've got sugar, and I've got chicken powder, though again, don't have it, leave it out. Um, and I've got tamarind, okay? This is tamarind concentrate in the jar. And this is what it looks like. And if you don't have, you've got lemon juice, I'll good, okay? Tamarind concentrate, you can see it. A, I, I, I again, like, because I, I come from a food production background, I don't, 
you know, I know like there are purists out there who tell you you should get the tan pulp and then boil it and then strain it through a strainer and scrape it and all that. That takes too long, all right? If you've earned food business and you have to hire staff, everything should be shortcut. Um, so that's why I use tamarind paste. Um, having said that, right, different brands of different of tamarind paste will come in different concentrations, okay? So there's a tam concentrate. Uh, I've, uh, <laughs> I've been caught out before where I actually wrote out a recipe for my cooking class students back when I used to run in real life cooking master classes. Um, and then at the last minute, uh, an ingredients manufacturer distributor offered their brand of tamarind paste for my students to use. And it turned out the paste was a lot stronger and a lot more concentrated. So essentially it kind of like messed up the recipe. <laughs> we had to do a lot of tweaking to fix it, right? But this tamarind paste, what does tamarind paste do? It basically adds sourness to your um, dish, all right? It also has a slight note, a uh, sweet note, okay? So can you just ignore Siri every time things I'm talking to her when I'm not? And she ignores me when I am, okay? So it's really frustrating. <laughs> but yeah, guys, say hello again. Let me know where you're watching from. And please share this out to your friends and family who might be interested in learning to cook. And again, if you don't know me, I'm Jackie M. I'm a born and raised in Malaysia, in a little town called Surumban, 40 miles south of Kuala Lumpur. And I came to Australia when I was a teenager. And uh, I, for the last over 20 years, I've run a Malaysian food business here in Australia culminating in a restaurant which I had to give up a few years ago to look after Noah. Some of you will know <laughs> Noah is sometimes more famous <laughs> than I am. Noah is my special needs child who's got Down syndrome, okay? But nowadays I do a lot of live videos, I do some television and I do a lot of other stuff <laughs> unrelated to actual physical selling food, okay? So let's get this out of the way. So if you're following along, you got a blender, that'll be awesome. Let's turn this on. The other thing I've got as well, I've got a uh, star anise, okay? Star anise and essentially a pinch of cinnamon. If you've got a cinnamon stick, that's fine. If you don't have either of them, don't worry, leave them out. And in fact, uh, yeah, the last time I made this, when I, I, I got a little, star anise and cinnamon are some of the strongest flavored spices you can, add to your food so you want to be very light-handed in, in in using them i actually put a little bit too much in it the last time and i think like frankly you could leave it out if you need to okay so let's what we want to do you know what if we do this let's move this out of the way and we are going to heat this up okay we're going to start you want some oil too, all right? Let's turn this on. Totally forgot about this. That's what happens when you talk too much. Okay, so I'm using a stoneware pan over here. Let's turn this on. And you want like a, maybe, a, uh, depending on how, how big your chicken pieces are, these are quite large, obviously being chicken legs. You only want to half cook the chicken. Um, so skin on or skin off, I've done it skin on, I've done it skin off. You only want to half cook it, but you want to essentially, especially if it's, you know, you want to basically sear it and fry it and try to crisp up the skin a little bit, okay? So I've got that much oil in there. We're just going to heat it up and I'm going to throw this in. But before we do that, we're going to toss some salt through this, okay? And another thing I want to point out as well, uh, the word subtle doesn't really exist in my vocabulary, right? So I tend to over salt things, I tend to over flavor things, right? So if you can't handle all of salt, <laughs> I actually made some fried chicken for a family yesterday, uh, some friends of mine. And because I was in a rush and I didn't have time to pre marinate the chicken in spices, I just thought I'll just throw extra salt in it. Oh my god, it's so salty. I don't know if they're watching today, but I'm really sorry if you are, Brie. <laughs> did not realize how salty it was. So we've got some salt in here. We're going to toss some um, turmeric through the chicken as well, okay? So if you've got fresh turmeric, beautiful. Uh, if not, turmeric powder. Okay. So if you're cooking along, I hope you've got all these ingredients on hand. Okay. 
to spice this through and it's a bit of ice among the chicken okay so and these are chicken legs and we're gonna cook them twice so don't worry that they're not cooked through all the way okay it's a lot of juice actually and if you want like you can actually score the meat as well i'm not going to bother doing that too much okay so let's just take these off And if I don't say hello back, <laughs> it's not personal, it's just I'm really focused on cooking. And because this has been shared out to like six different places, it's hard for me to keep track of the comments, okay? Um, but let me have a look. Let's have a look. Anyone commenting? Okay. never made this before mavis how you doing i sent out your oh by the way guys uh mavis was one of the winners of last week's giveaway i sent them out today so you should get it hopefully next week but we all know that australia post is having problems with shipping and all that sort of stuff so mavis was one of four people who won these loose leaf blue tea packets right sachets courtesy of my blue tea it's actually look it was actually my product they, they gave it to me and i decided to to, to, to use as giveaways for you guys but again like I said for today we're going to again pick three people to get a hold of these caffeine lime leaf powder um, that I have on hand as well okay so do a try I mean I, I'm not going to pick the winners today so you've still got a few days to actually attempt the recipe and post the pictures send me send me the pictures so I know what they look like okay so this heating up hey Lynn, how are you doing Mala how are you <laughs> hey Lynn, how are you <laughs> Eric, how are you? And Ken, how are you? Let's just see. Again, I said, I'm just going through some of the comments now as this oil is heating up. Jean, hello. <laughs> Finally managed. Yeah. Mona, how are you? Maggie, hey, from Portugal. Oh, wow. Very cool. You know, my last name is Portuguese. Uh, yeah, not because I'm Portuguese. Okay, let's have a look. Let's see. There's a problem with this. I'm having a problem playing this video. Let me just have a look and see if it's still live. Let's see. Okay. Let me just see if, if there's any problem at all, guys. Just PM me, okay? Something went wrong. Okay. Let's have a look. Drop frames. No drop frames. Okay. We'll be taking notes. Okay, can someone actually comment and let me know that I'm still live? Yeah. Okay, we're having problems playing this video. Let me just have a look. I'm, I'm, I'm watching this from a different computer and it seems like it's having problems with the video. But let me just see if it's still going. I don't want to turn it. Let me just turn off the audio first. And uh, okay, it seems to be still running. Okay, right. So we've got the onion. Okay, we've got two onions here. You can use less. I don't have that much chicken here. Look, everything I do, that's the other thing you gotta remember as well. Everything I do is very aga aga, which is Malay for guesstimating. All right. And by the way, I didn't get a chance to say hello to everyone else because it only came up with an error and got a little bit anxious that my internet had played up again or faithful has played up again all right so what we want to do again we've got the onion okay we're going to blitz this along with the garlic and we've got some ginger like i said i'm only going to use half this okay if any anyone who's uh celebrating ramadan uh, <laughs> Thanks for joining me, by the way. Um, so we've got this. If you've got fresh chilies in the, the dry chili paste, add that in there as well, okay? So again, onion, garlic, ginger. These are very, very um, kind of like standard paste ingredients in Malaysian cooking that you would usually add. So we're going to put that in there. I'm going to blitz this. So just be careful, it's going to be a little bit loud for a couple of seconds. Okay, 
So here you go. That's my. This is what we call in Malay rumpa. All right, rumpa is kind of like spice paste. So rumpa almost always will have onion and garlic, right? If you've got lemongrass, would be a good thing to add to this as well. So if you've got lemongrass, add it in. Uh, but lemon gar, uh, sorry, onion and garlic, the two biggest ingredients in rumpa. Ginger, like maybe 50%, 70% of the time you'll have ginger as well. Lemongrass, uh, you know, they have all the other stuff, right? But they're all like collectively blended into a paste. So we call rumpa, R-E-M-P-A-H, okay? Chili and all that sort of stuff, okay? So you see this, this mix here is quite wet, okay? Because of the onion and it's just roughly chopped, it's not that puree okay but it's up to you it depends on like uh, how you like your the texture of your dish okay so we've got this heating up let's throw in the chicken okay because the chicken's a little bit wet you can see there's some moisture in there this might spit a little bit see how we go And again, all we want to do is just half cook it. We're not trying to cook it all the way. We're not trying to uh, overcook it, okay? Because it's then going to get braised as well. So while that's going, we've got the onion here. We're going to slice up the rest of this onion, okay? Now, a lot of people ask me what kind of knives I use. This is just like, this is probably my most fancy knife. And even then, it's actually made in China. Okay, this is a knockoff of the uh, Japanese, I think it's a Santoku knife, right? But there's a Chinese knockoff which costs maybe about 12 bucks or something like that. But usually I use even cheaper knives, okay? So if you do the sort of thing I do, and if you use a lot of appliances, like I do, like a food processor and all that, I, I've never seen the need to use, I mean, I, I actually find Western chef's knives really offer to use, so yeah, that's a little bit kind of not something that I aspire to ever kind of acquire, okay? So we just want to turn this over, make sure it's all evenly cooked. So the idea is you want to actually crisp up the skin, assuming you're, you're using chicken with skin. And obviously if you're using chicken fillets, right, um, they will cook faster than this chicken on bone. Of all the cuts of chicken, chicken drumsticks are the ones that take the longest to cook. All right, so that's something you got to keep in mind. That's why it's really hard when you're writing recipes, you know, about how long to cook. Like, I have a website, jackiem.com.au, there's nearly 400 recipes there. Um, but I literally just went through something yesterday to because I run a coaching group on Facebook, a paid co coaching group, and I had to refer back to my old recipes and tweak them for them. And I read them, and this is actually one of the recipes that appeared in my, I think either in my cookbook or in my iPad app. And I was horrified about how long it's to cook because I was doing a recipe for soy gal, which are these basically these glorified wontons. And it said that to poach them for five minutes. I was thinking they would be dead in the water if they were poached for five minutes. So a lot of the time, you know, the way I work is like, I just do it by instinct, all right? So sometimes you catch me like three o'clock in the morning trying to put together a recipe post. I might just kind of like lose the pot a little bit in terms of like, Get amazing things. So you have to apply some level of discretion at your end, okay? If ever you come across a Jackie M recipe, um, don't try and measure everything to the nth degree. Don't try and like, you know, time everything to the nth degree, okay? What a warning. <laughs> All right. So this is just cooking along. And we'll slice up the onion. And then we've got the tomatoes. We're just going to cut them into chunks, okay? These are fairly small tomatoes, so they don't necessarily need to be cut that small. It's really depending on what you've got on hand. Okay, so it's want to make sure that my video is still running. 
He's still alive. Okay, I'm only using chicken fillets. Awesome, yeah. Chicken fillets. Actually, I would have used chicken fillets. You know why I bought this? Because this was cheap. <laughs> I bought like a two kilo bag for like seven dollars, right? And I looked at chicken fillets and a small little pack got seven dollars. I said, no, I'm going for the big <laughs> drumsticks. <laughs> Okay, again, so we want to we like just kind of brown this up a little bit. So we've got the onion, we've got the tomatoes, and while this is cooking, what I'm going to do, you can actually wait for that to be done, but what I might do is actually start frying up the, the spice mix, okay? So let's turn this on. I'm not going to put any oil in here yet. I want to actually just cook the spice paste without any oil in it to pull out all the moisture, most of the moisture. So, because a lot of the time, like even the way I used to do it, I would heat up some oil and then put in the spice paste. And remember what I, how I showed you the spice paste was all like sloppy and wet. What happens when you do that into hot oil is that it starts spitting everywhere and it's a big massive mess in your kitchen and it puts you off having to cook and it, you end up with oil burns on your hands and whatever right so nowadays what I do is I add I, I, I pan fry this pull out the moisture then I add the oil right towards the end and you still want to fry it small with the oil but otherwise it'll taste it'll taste kind of like boring you know because oil helps uh, roast the onion so you do want to still roast it but not immediately only after most of the moisture has been pulled out right okay so i've got this going when i was over in uh saba courtesy of Shangri-La Hanjong Aru. I went to one of their Kadazan chefs. Kadazan's the uh, largest indigenous group in Sa, Borneo. And he made some dishes, Kadazan style. And you know what really stuck out to me? This rumpa, right? Same recipe as what we did, like, you know, a Malaysian recipe. But his rumpa, with the lemongrass, they were all in big chunks and apparently the Kadasan people like to have all this in chunky bits they like the fibrous texture of lemongrass so that they can chew on it when they're eating it isn't that interesting? so there are just lots of different ways of cooking things you see, I don't know if you can see the moisture you know, all, the, all the liquid, right? So we're just going to pull it out and fry it. And hi Selena, hi Adeline, hi Penny, her still alive. <laughs> hi Harry. Yeah, like the last the last two broadcasts I did, I had technical problems. My audio started going wonky. You watched last week's podcast with me in the red shirt. At some point, I lost the connection to my video uh, video cameras. And then when it came back on, the microphone dropped out and I didn't realize. And for the rest of the broadcast, the audio was really grating. And some of you were trying to warn me in the comments, except I didn't see them until after the end of the broadcast. So. Uh, if ever you come across a technical problem when I'm streaming, send me a private message uh, because I would be more inclined to, to, to notice when, it, when I hear the ding, the, the private message for me and check what it is, assuming you're a friend of mine. If you're not a friend, just add me as a friend on Facebook, alright? <laughs> I haven't hit my 5,000 limit, limit yet, so go ahead and add me as long as you're not some strange, <laughs> a strange person. <laughs> Alright, so we, like I said, we're just pulling out the moisture here. And this is pretty much done, right? The chicken here, we can take it out. What we're going to do 
we're gonna transfer everything back in here because this is a bigger pot. We're gonna actually do the braising in here. So this is essentially a braised dish. You know how we describe this dish? This is like I don't know, like some Westerners think of curries as kind of like adult food. You know, even though like if you're Malaysian, you know. Mm, the average Malaysian curry is really mild and it's really kid friendly in my opinion but a lot of westerners when they think curry they think of the super spicy Rogan Josh from their Indian restaurants so they don't think it's kid food right and I know because like I said I sometimes cook meals for families you know um, from my church maybe maybe someone's got something happening in their lives and you know we, we just got on this roster to cook food for the family and a lot of them like are really um, are really reticent about me cooking curry for their family when they've got kids around but Malaysian curry are actually very kid friendly but nonetheless assuming you can't get over that mental hurdle right this is something that you might want to actually introduce your kids to to start off with because this is kind of a kid friendly um, way to eat Malaysian food right that's not so boring that it's just ketchup and chicken but um, you know something a little bit uh, bit exotic but not too much of a challenge either okay so this is kind of like an intermediate step towards Malaysian, Malaysian dining okay so we've taken out the chicken and we're going to take out most of the oil Like I said, we're going to transfer everything back in here eventually, but put this here. Let's put some of the oil in here now. Okay, now you want to brown this, okay? They always say in Malaysian like recipe books, you cook until the oil separates and what it means is essentially you want to brown the onion. Okay, you don't want to just cook them till they're pearly and soft and you don't want to just lightly toast them or caramelize them. You want to brown them, okay, without burning, alright? So this is the same process you would apply even if you were cooking like a curry or a rendang or, or, or biryani rice or whatever. Okay, so 80%, 90% of Malaysian spicy dishes will incorporate this step and this set of ingredients. Okay, so you, you always make sure you have onion and garlic, lemongrass, beautiful, ginger, and you're pretty much set to cook pretty much like 80-90% of Malaysian uh, spicy dishes, okay? Not all Malaysian dishes, obviously because Malaysian food is so diverse, but all the curry and the the, 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 the the sambal and all that, these are the key ingredients you want, okay? So you see how, how quickly this cooks up, okay? Let's transfer this over. And again, like I said, I'm doing this because there's going to be water added to all this, okay? for this now we can add all of this okay so we've got the onion and the tomatoes I just managed to spat some oil on my shirt if you if you followed me for long enough you realize that I wear the same clothes from like years ago you know what I mean <laughs> I don't know if any of you real notice that. I know everyone makes one of my blue shirts. <laughs> I actually have a few blue shirts that look very similar. But this green shirt, you will notice. You can go back about seven years and, and notice that I was wearing the same green shirt way back then. <laughs> Alright, so we're putting the chicken. Let's throw in the tomato ketchup, right? At this point, you're pretty much throwing everything in. Tomato so the idea with this, the flake profile is it's going to be a little bit spicy, right? Let's put some chili in. We'll throw in the cinnamon and the sour anise. So the flavor profile is that it's a little bit spicy, right? If you can take more spice, put more in. You can't. 
only add a little bit in, but it has some in, right? So you can either put ketchup or bottle chili sauce or bun, okay? And we're going to add the tamarind. So the flavor is it's going to be a bit sour, a bit sweet, a bit spicy. You probably don't need as much tamarind as I, I just threw in, okay? Because obviously I, I get a little bit carried away. So I'm going to add water. And I hope you've got either uh, evaporated milk or coconut milk on hand. I'm not using coconut milk because I don't want to open a whole big pack of coconut milk um, and I'm use a bit of it here. So I'm going to use coconut milk powder, which is why I'm adding a lot of water here, okay? If you're using coconut milk, add a bit of water plus coconut milk. If you're using coconut milk powder, then more water and then eventually coconut milk powder. Okay, I can leave it out for the moment. So right now we've got the sliced onion, the tomatoes, the ketchup, the chili and the tamarind okay if you don't have tamarind like i say maybe a couple of squirts of lemon juice will be will be great and we're gonna put some sugar in here all right some of you are a little bit leery about adding sugar to your food then leave it out okay i don't um if you've eaten thai food thai food has a lot of sugar in it all right um malaysian food not so much but this this particular dish does have some sweetness to it okay but if you think, oh, I can't stand having sugar in my food, but I love Thai food, then you're, you're being a hypocrite, all right? <laughs> all right, so let's do this. And I'm going to add a little bit of chicken powder. Again, you can leave it out. You can just put a pinch of salt in here if you want at this point. Uh, I, I tend to throw chicken powder into everything I, I uh, cook. And I want to cover, cover this and just let it simmer. Okay, so it's pretty simple, right? Uh, at the end, you just want to adjust the flavors, and like I said, if you're putting coconut coconut milk in here, you can put it in now. Really, I just want to like let it kind of um, come up to a boil before I, I add it. You want to add more tomatoes, go for your life. But this is like a really simple kind of like thing you can whip up with the family for dinner, you know. Divya, nice to watch your cooking videos on the share when I make my onion garlic ginger because I slice them and fry them well first, then blend it. I find it's quicker to get that. Oh, that's interesting. That's very, that's very cool. That's a cool tip. Guys, so this is from Divya. You, she actually slices uh, the onion and garlic and ginger um, and fry them up first and then blend them. Um, and she ends up using less oil. It doesn't take as long to fry from raw. All right, so that's something you can try as well next time. Okay. So I've been late, was in another Zoom meeting that stretched on. Her <laughs> audio is good today. Yay, thanks Andrew. <laughs> Thank God for that. How long did it take you to get it right? Um, it's funny with my audio, of course, for years I was actually... Uh, I had um, Rode microphones used to supply all my microphones, right? And then... Something happened, uh, not because of me or whatever, but something happened and we lost contact and I ended up just buying a microphone from somewhere else and this is the one that's been playing. Now literally, like this new microphone I bought from a different brand to Rode, it was under warranty for 12 months and then it's like 15 months now, 14-15 months now and it started playing out and it really annoys me. Now I think I'm gonna have to talk to Rode again. <laughs> But yeah, dear, that, that's a great tip, right? You can try it next time. Uh, slice up your onion and garlic and ginger, pan fry it first, and then blend it, and then fry it again. Is that what, what you need? And it's quicker. And the Lyman Familia has posted recipe and recommendation. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, Lee, how are you? <laughs> yep, recipe, I'm going to post a whole recipe. See, so, yes, I'm actually um, creating a downloadable PDF for the recipe. So um, if you're on my email list, you will get a copy of it. If you're not on my email list, just comment recipe, please, and I will send it out to you, all right? Best thing is sign up to my email list. <laughs>
Okay, so we're going to add coconut milk powder. Like I said, I'm only using milk, coconut milk powder because I'm so convicted about this. See, like I buy these big packs of coconut cream because I'm cheap. Because the bigger the the bigger the volume they come in, the cheaper they are, right? Um, but then when I buy a big pack, 99% of the time I need coconut milk. I don't use the whole pack, I eat only a small amount of it. So nowadays my workaround is to use coconut milk powder. So I, I, I put water in and I put coconut milk powder in here. Okay, so let's do this. And I also, the other thing about my cooking is I like it very uh, creamy, coconut creamy. Everything about my food, like, you know, if you follow me, you've eaten my food, um, there's, like I said, there's no subtlety in how I live my life and how I cook, alright? It carries across my look everything else. But um, when I make curries, back when I had my restaurant, they were very rich, very creamy. Uh, same with my laksa and same in this case, okay? I know some people will prefer it very, uh, very much less so, okay? So just be, you know, just adapt it to how you prefer your food, okay? So, and look, ideally the way you use coconut milk powder is not what I did here, okay? Ideally you're supposed to actually um, mix it with water separately until it's dissolved and then pour it in, okay? But again, I'm, I'm super impatient and super big on shortcuts. Are you doing the chicken? I'm doing... Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. Chicken the air fryer would be perfect, actually. Okay, so let's just try and break up the coconut milk lumps here <laughs> I'll just bring it up a little bit more and if you want it more tomato we add more tomato uh, tomato sauce to it as well all right like I say a number of Malaysian dishes do contain tomato sauce do contain ketchup right I'm thinking of uh, dishes like mi goreng uh, Mijawa. If you can name any others, let me know. I've had some versions of Pasembo that actually contain tomato sauce in it, right? And again, it's a little bit of a tightrope, okay? How much you put in. If you put in too much, it just tastes like ketchup food, right? Like it just tastes like ketchup noodles or all that sort of stuff. So just be a little bit kind of conscious of that. But yeah, for Westerners who think that ketchup is a Western food, no, we use it a lot in our in our in our, in our diet in one way or another. Okay. And the fact of the matter is, ketchup is actually I don't know whether it originates from the Chinese word because um, I'm I'm Chinese, obviously Chinese Malaysian. Ketchup uh, in Cantonese is ketchup is tomato sauce fun ketchup right so i don't know if ketchup actually comes from the cantonese ke 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 you know, ketchup okay so let's get a spoon and taste test this and someone then i don't know who was I forget, was it Lynn or someone else who mentioned yesterday that they love eating this biryani rice and you know, maybe one of these days I'll do a session and show you guys how to make a quick and easy biryani rice, Malaysian style. Right, let's turn this down some more. If you're cooking chicken legs, okay, you want to cook the chicken legs for about 20 minutes or so. Um, the other thing as well is... Uh, Malaysia, I, I keep telling you guys, Malaysian cuisine is very diverse and our ethnic backgrounds do impact on how we are cooking, right? Even we're cooking the same thing. But having said that, um, the, the Chinese by and large like to be very light-handed in how they how they cook their food, all right? Like you think of Chinese chicken rice, okay? The chicken is almost pink and that builds out the Westerners, okay? The Malay, Malay style cooking, they cook the hell out of it, okay? So it will be like, you don't have to worry about it being a little bit 
uncooked or something like that. Because I am masak me, as a Malay dish, then we'll cook it longer. Okay? You want to cook it, you don't want to cook it till it falls off the burn, but you want to make sure that it is cooked properly. Okay? It starts to kind of like, you see the meat start to kind of like um, pull away a little bit. Okay? It's when you know it's done. Okay? And I'm compelled, I'm compelled to add a little bit of chicken powder some more. <laughs> But flavor-wise, it's pretty much okay. But yeah, let's do this. Chicken powder or salt. Just add a touch more to this. Okay. And if you want more tomatoes, you can do that too. So we're going to just try and break up some of the bits of meat here. But yeah, if you think of Chinese cooking in Malaysia, like when we steam fish, we want to steam it for 10 minutes, 8 minutes, 10 minutes, like when it's just done, okay? I've eaten like, um, uh, say, fish head curry at a Chinese restaurant in Malaysia, and I've eaten fish head curry in an Indian restaurant in Malaysia. The way they cook the fish is different, right? The Chinese, like, they sometimes even just steam the fish and then pour the curry sauce over it because they want it very, very lightly cooked. Um, the Indian fish head curry, they cook the hell out of it so that it's uh, very, very well done, okay? Um, same with um, Malay ikan bakar as well, right? You get ikan bakar, which I love, which is like barbecued fish in Malaysia. A lot of, you know, a lot of people who are not from Malaysia might actually be inclined to think that we're overcooking the fish, all right? Again, it's just different cooking styles of the different ethnic backgrounds, right? Okay, so this is pretty much done. So like I said, this is kind of like an intermediate, like if you think uh, you want your kids to eat Malaysian food, but you think uh, maybe a curry is not a rendang, it's not like the best introduction for them that they might kind of like struggle with the heavy spices and the, the you know, the strong flavors and all that, right? Then do something like this. Okay, to me this tastes perfect. Just a hint of chili, a hint of cumin, uh, not cumin, um, of, uh, cinnamon, and a hint of star anise, okay? But which you can leave out, I think it just adds like an interesting layer to the flavor. Otherwise, if you only put ketchup and the onion and the garlic, I think you might end up having it taste very ketchupy, you know what I mean? So try and like incorporate just these little bits of flavors into them to make it a little bit more interesting. So it kind of looks like a pseudo curry, right? And you know, I only put like maybe two tablespoons of ketchup in here and then plus the tomatoes. If you want to put more, go for your life. A lot of ayam masak merah in Malaysia, the reason why it's called red cooked chicken is that it usually looks red, okay? So this one does not look that red, okay? Um, but I, I prefer it from a flavor profile point of view, like this. And again, I, I use coconut milk because I like the flavor of santan, which is coconut milk, in my food. You can use evaporated milk, okay? Especially in this lockdown environment, if evaporated milk is easier, come by, pour some evaporated milk into this. Evaporated milk will actually give it a slightly different hue, and it's actually quite pretty. Um, it won't have the, 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 the coconut. But you know, in all honesty, from what I've researched, most people don't actually put santan don't put coconut milk into their ayam masamera. But to me, it tastes nice, you know. Um, and that's the beauty of Asian food. There's so many different ways to skin a cat, if you like, that it works. I think that's the main thing. And it tastes great. That's all. That's the main thing, all right? So again, if you don't have tamarind, uh, lemon juice, uh, squeeze lemon juice, um, that just gives it that nice little piquant twist to it. Uh, sugar, a uh, little bit arbitrary, how sweet you want this, but um, you don't want it to be outright sweet, but you want it to be a balance of sweet, sour, and spicy, okay? A little bit similar, I guess, to some of the f uh, the, the flavor profile of some Thai dishes that you might have come across, okay? So this is I Mask Up Mirror. Um, again, let me know if you want a recipe, just say recipe, please. Um, Right after this broadcast, I run out the house and I go and pick up my son Noah. Um, so I don't necessarily usually have time to respond immediately. I'll come back and I'll watch everything up. <laughs> All right, but I will respond to you guys. So say hello, let me know where you're watching from so I can get to know you better. Um, if you want to make sure you don't miss my live broadcast, that's a special Facebook group that was created 
just so that I can actually make sure all my live videos go there. All right. So it's called Jack M Street Food Kitchen. You'll find the link on my Facebook profile, which is uh, what's my uh, my my personal Facebook profile is facebook.com slash Jackie M Sydney I'm pretty sure you can find me anyway um, but there's a link to it there Jackie M Street Food Kitchen is a free group like I said it was created just like over 24 hours ago specifically so that people can catch all my live broadcasts and also not just that we'll be sharing other content as well everything to do with Malaysian street food and also you can post your food photos there as well so it's a community it's a very engaged and and I love it like I said it's only been around just over 24 hours and people are just having a ball over there all right guys uh, thanks so much for sticking around uh, I hope to see you next week like I said if you post photos of your attempts at Ayamasa era your version of it no judgment this is going to be the best three uh, versions of it it's just three random people who actually attempt the recipe i will send out to you guys a packet of these kaffir lime leaf powder okay it's a hundred percent kaffir lime leaf uh to you in the next week all right so i'll pick three random this and send it out to you and I know in this day and age, it's a little bit logistically tricky. I actually tried to send something to Norway a couple of weeks ago and apparently Norway as a country is locked down to the point they're not even accepting incoming parcels. So, you know, barring those sort of unforeseen circumstances, um, you will get one of those. Okay, if you win. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks again, guys, uh, for joining me. And I want to give a special shout out to Lynn from AOTV, Aussie Malaysian TV. That's something that... Um, is quite an exciting initiative so if you're in australia and you're originally from malaysia check out AMTV's facebook page and uh follow them right and i will be doing some work with them over there as well but yeah don't forget jackie of street food kitchen if you want to interact with my new street food community and i will see you next week thanks again guys ciao